Hello and welcome to my channel, On The Hook Crochet, where we talk about wearable crochet style. And let's find out what's been on the hook. Well, if you click the thumbnail to get to this video, you'll see that I'm holding up my Girl With A Pearl earring. I've made a lot of progress on it this week, and I want to show you that at the end of this video. So I will maneuver over to my work table, and I'll show you the progress I've made on it, and also on the Garden at Argentui by Monet as well. So for you diamond painting lovers, wait till the end of the uh, video and I will show you some of the progress I've made. If you follow me on Instagram, you will have seen these pictures or some of them. I think I've actually uh, progressed farther on the girl with the pearl earring since the last time I posted on Instagram. So today will be like a little update for the diamond painting fans out there. I tell you, I have enjoyed this hobby so much. Not as much as crochet, but I have enjoyed it. And it's a very relaxing hobby. You don't have to have a lot of skill to do it. You do have to be careful and organized, that's all. And even if you're not organized, you can probably do just fine. <laughs> it does help though. So I want to show you the progress I'm making on that. I also have three whips that I want to show you. And uh, some suggestions about um, making a sweater and I know some people are saying to me I'm afraid to start a sweater I'm afraid that I won't do it right I'm afraid that I won't get it right enough to wear I'm afraid I'll waste my time and honestly you will not waste your time if you make a sweater that fits you if you make a sweater that fits you out of a yarn that you like and really you should love the yarn because you're going to be working with it for many hours and also there are so many different types of yarn that you have a choice a million choices to make regarding the yarn that you select now I'm going to talk for a second about what I'm wearing here I'm wearing the think pink top and this is a pattern that I wrote back in 2019 I still love the sweater so much. I don't know what it is. I think a lot of it has to do with the yarn that I used. I used James Brett cotton on denim DK yarn. Now, it's been discontinued. As many of the yarns that I use have been discontinued, they just, the companies just don't keep yarns around like they used to, and that's fine. You can always find a substitute. This is a DK cotton and acrylic half and half yarn and you could easily substitute comfy cotton by lime brand this is a very soft cotton easily adapted to a sweater you can make a sweater out of this it comes in navy and red and pink and it also comes in variegated colors as well so you could uh, select a variegated color like this was and make one of these sweaters and I, what I want to show you about the sweater is a little bit different, and that's the reason I wrote the sweater pattern. This is what the sweater looks like on me this year. It's been two years, and it was right after I lost a whole lot of weight, and I made a sweater that actually fit me. This only right now has about four inches of ease all the way around. So uh, on each side of each panel, front and back, I added one inch to the uh, hip measurement. So it's really not that big. I do like it though because it's not a big boxy sweater, which I do have lots of those. I do like those. But this one is made to fit me. And so one of my first sweaters that I wrote a pattern for, I decided to make it more of a fitted sweater. It's not, it's not shaped, but it's just fitted. And also, what I like about this sweater Besides the yarn that I selected, I do like the cotton acrylic yarn because those are the most comfortable in the summertime, is the way I did the sleeves. I'm going to hold my arms out so you can see that my sleeves are not decreased. They're not bell sleeves. They're just straight sleeves. And this is what I like about this pattern. It is so comfortable on. Uh, the sleeves are not fitted to you, and I also drop them down under the arm just a little bit so that they wouldn't be tight and fitted under the arm. So there's, there's some give under the arm, some ease under the arm, as you could say. And the sweater sleeves are very easy to make. First of all, we crocheted the front and the back. Then we sew them together at the shoulder seams. All right. Then we lay out the sweater flat on a dining room table or whatever. 
and you take the measurement of the arm hole that you want to use. So I measured right at where the sweater ended, which was almost at my shoulder. It wasn't that far over. So I measured around here. I added two inches of ease, two inches of ease. And I took that measurement and I laid it on my sweater and the middle of the measurement goes to at the shoulder seam. So you have half of the measurement on the back and half on the front. So that would give you the size of uh, your sleeve. You then crochet the sleeve onto the sweater as I direct in the, in the pattern. There are things that you do there that you need to know about, but you do just crochet the sleeve onto the open front and back panels that are sewn at the, at the shoulder seams. Then you sew the underarm seam from the hem of the, well, I, I always sew from the hem of the sleeve to the underarm, and then I sew from the hem of the sweater to the underarm. And that keeps the sweater from pulling as you sew it together. So you want to sew it from here to here, and then from the hem all the way up to the armhole. <clears throat> that gives you a nice uh, loose seam, and that way it, it lays right when you uh, put the sweater on, the seams lay down very nicely. When you sew the seams that way, it helps your sweater to relax. Now, that is the reason I like the sweater right here, because it was easy to make. The sleeves were very easy to make. There was no decreasing. The sleeves are not fitted, so they're very easy to make. And it's a very comfortable sweater on. And I think part of that is the yarn. The yarn is very soft. It's cotton and acrylic, and of course it's been discontinued. <laughs> But anyway, this is the pattern that I'm wearing, the Think Pink Top, and it's been out on my Etsy shop for a long time, and a lot of you have loved it, and I appreciate you supporting my Etsy shop. But those of you who haven't tried it, it's a different way to uh, address a sleeve in a sweater, and this is how it looks on. It's very comfortable, but it's not sloppy looking. I don't think these are sloppy looking sleeves. And the, the edgings are very simple. I might have crocheted one row of single crochet around the bottom. And the sleeves are look like there are maybe three or four rows of single crochet at the bottom. Just to get them the length that I wanted. I love this length. It's not right at the elbow, but it's a little bit above the elbow. But it also covers up a kind of a loose arm that I've developed over the many, many decades that I've been alive. <laughs> and that brings me up to... Uh, today, which is June 10th, 2021, and this is my birthday. And um, I've had lots of birthday greetings from my family and my friends, and uh, I'm real excited about that. But I've never in my entire life taken off my birthday, like taking a day off work. So I thought I would come on and do a video for y'all. Even though it's my birthday, who cares? It's not just, just another day. But uh, I think Mr. On the Hook later on was going to take me out for lunch or dinner. So, uh, and he gave me some nice presents today that'll help with my um, crochet channel. So, <laughs> he's very thoughtful about those kinds of things. So, it's been a fun year on On the Hook Crochet. And I've, I've actually been around almost two years now. So, uh, I'm, I'm glad to have been here. I'm glad I've got a channel that I have a few people who watch. And I appreciate those folks who watch me every video. There's some people who watch every video, and that's so sweet of y'all to do. I know it's a it's an investment in time, and I hope that I can bring you something that's informative and imaginative, maybe innovative, something that you might be inspired by. So uh, I hope that I'm doing that for y'all. And I appreciate everyone who comments on my channel, all the questions you send me. I try to answer them all. So um, there again, I just wanted to let y'all know it's my birthday. Let's look at some whips I have in progress. So today I want to show you the progress I've made on the sea and sky sweater. This is a second run on the, on the pattern that I wrote, I don't know, a few months ago. And it's called the sea, here I'll just show it to you. It's the sea and sky pattern and it's made originally from fingering weight and it's a fingering almost sport weight which is just a little bit bigger than fingering this is a fingering sport weight uh, it's called a sport weight but 
it's not much bigger than fingering. So I think it's probably about the same size. And I know that I used an eye hook to make my original sweater, but this sweater I've had to drop back to an H hook. And, well, I'm sorry, it's not an H hook, it's a number seven hook, which is between a G and an H hook. A G hook is 4.0 millimeter, and an H hook is a 5.0 millimeter. So the one right in the middle is the seven, it's a 4.5. It's a, this is my clover. It's a blue. It looks a lot like the H hook, only it's not quite as dark blue. But this is the 4.5 millimeter number seven hook. And it seems to be a better size hook for this particular yarn. And I want to show you again how you can adjust your hook size to the size you need. I started out with an H hook and I did the ribbing with an H hook, all right? It's a little bit loose, it's okay. I like it okay, you can't see through it or anything. So that's an H hook. Then I changed to an I hook as I did in the pattern. But the I hook made this, the stitches a little bit too far apart. You can see through it. I wasn't pleased with that. So I changed to this size seven hook right about there where I have that stitch marker. And you can see right up here, these stitches are much smaller than these. Now, this is going to look better on. So I'm just going to continue on with this size hook and see how it looks. But I do like the way it's turning out. This has a row of cross stitch um, in the row pattern. So it does give it some interest to the eye. I'm making this out of a solid color. So you'll be able to see that cross row right there. It comes in every every third or fourth row. I'll have to look at my pattern. Anyway, it comes in every so often. So the cross stitch gives it some interest on the fabric. See right there? There's a cross stitch row there. There's one here. So I'm, I'm liking it better with this particular hook. So I'm going to continue with this on through the end of the sweater and I think it'll be fine. It's not taking me any longer to use this hook. It might take a tad bit longer because it, it'll uh, make the fabric smaller, so I'll have to um, increase the size of the fabric, but not much. Now, this is an example of what you can do when you start crocheting a sweater and you don't like the way the stitches are. If they're not obscene or they're not really bad, you can change the size of your hook. In fact, I think I changed it twice. There are two stitch markers on here. <laughs> I changed it twice. The first time it was um, the H hook, and then I decided to use the 7 hook. So I, I've been all around the world on this, but you can't really tell. It, somebody just looking at this probably wouldn't be able to tell. But I can tell because I know that I started a smaller hook at the, the few, top few rows here. So when I wear it, I'll be able to wear it without a tank top under it. That's my goal. I do not want to make a summer sweater that I have to have two layers on with. I'm not all excited about that. Sometimes I do that, but really I don't like to wear sweaters and tank tops together when it's really, really hot. So that's where I am on this particular project. Here's one of Joe's bags. This is um, a bag made by Joe at Joe for Totes. She made it for me a long time ago, or actually I think I bought it from her. It was already made and I liked it. It's not, it doesn't have any pockets in it anywhere, but I still like it. I like it a lot. I use this all the time. It's a beautiful pattern, and I like to leave it sitting on my couch. I think it's really pretty there. And thank you, Joe. Joe will be back, I think, on Monday with a video. We'll have to see. She hasn't promised me yet, but she says she's working on some bags. So we may hear from her next. Now, the progress on this other tea that I'm making, this is called the Soft Linen Tea. And it's turning out so pretty. I really like this. Now, this is a sweater that is made from fingering weight yarn. And up here, you don't have to make it out of fingering weight yarn. Believe me, you can make it out of a much larger yarn. But this is what I had in my stash, and I wanted to use it for a summer top. So I've made the bottom of it, and I'll probably put a rib down here. I'm thinking I'll put a rib at the bottom. This is a special stitch. This is a row repeat up here. And it, it is, is what I'm making the yoke from. It is a different kind of a stitch. And if you can see that, 
it's kind of a stripe using stripes stitches for stripes that's what it is <laughs> using stitches for stripes because they're not on the back they're only on the front so it's a two row repeat actually and that gives it this nice yoke look I really like it and this is where I am right about now I think I'm going to make it about that long so I have a few more rows left to do up here and I'll be finished with the back this is the back of the sweater and I will design the front neck. When I get there, I'll make a decision about how I want the front neck to be. It'll probably just be a scoop neck. It won't be anything um, too difficult. It might be a square neck because of the yoke. The yoke is going to start here. And when I start the neckline, I may just let it be a square. So it'll be easy to make. And that's my focus with this. I don't want it to be too difficult to make. The stitches at the top are a little bit of a challenge at first until you get the hang of it and then it becomes second nature so it's not difficult to do and if you're making that out of a larger yarn I'm going to take this bracelet off it's just making a racket <laughs> when you um, make that out of a, a larger yarn then you won't have so many stitches across in fact you can start the yoke right here if you want to I've started mine way down here on the back but I'm thinking I could start a yoke here and just let it go over to the sleeves like that. I don't know, I'll have to see how it turns out. This one in particular though, my yoke started a little bit lower. So I'm gonna give you the option in the pattern to start your yoke either here or anywhere in here you want, or just start it at the neckline. You could do that too and just have the yoke be here. So there are lots of ways to make that particular sweater and I'll put those options in the pattern for you. So if you decide you don't want to make so much yoke like I did, I made a long yoke, it's all the way up the top, um, you can uh, cut back on the yoke and uh, work a little faster on the sweater. So I'll give you that option. Next. This is the Malabrigo yarn that came in my mail last week. It's a beautiful quarterly box that they send out and they always send out Malabrigo yarn. This is beautiful yarn. It is called Wash Ted and this is the label that came on it. This is Wash Ted and or Washed. I don't know that's not spelled right for washed but whatever. Um, anyway <laughs> I thought I would start something with this just because it's so beautiful. It's sitting on my desk and I wanted to see how it looked crocheted so I started my Winterscape wrap and let me show you the pattern this is out there on the web in my Etsy shop it's called the Winterscape wrap and I first made this out of Red Heart Colorscape yarn beautiful beautiful yarn I love it love it but instead of making another one out of Colorscape yarn which I don't need to do I thought I would branch out and use this Malabrigo yarn and I started one yesterday just to see how it looked crocheted up and I'll probably continue with this. It's really pretty. This will not be appropriate for summer. <laughs> I don't think. I uh, don't really need a scarf in the summertime but I think in the winter time this is going to be just gorgeous. So I'm going to make my Winterscape wrap and see how it looks in this particular yarn. So I started here. This is where you start and you move through the, the, the directions to make your V and it you, you have to check each row to be sure that you're on track and after after two or three rows you have it and then you work on the rest of your um, scarf and this is it's actually a wrap but I think I'm going to wear this as a scarf and I then continued with the red so I've got the speckled yarn here and then the red here and this is what it looks like so far I think it's going to be pretty it is a little bit busy, so I probably won't. What I'm, what I'm planning to do is do four rows of each color all the way out. And then the border, the border will be one or the other color. I don't know which. But I think I, I have plenty of yarn for that. So that's how I plan to make it. I'm going to make it in stripes. And I think it's going to be beautiful. And this will be like something I could wear at Christmas time with a black dress. So gorgeous. The red on this is just hard to describe. It's so beautiful. It's just so beautiful. So that is a work in progress that I have. Not sure how quickly I'll finish that, but it's something that I could take with me and very easily work on in the car or on a trip. 
and I'm also making it with an H hook which is a 5.0 millimeter hook so this is a, a worsted yarn that doesn't really look worsted to me it looks more like a DK but uh, it's a small worsted yarn and it's very soft though and a very smooth yarn the Malabrigo yarns are my favorite yarns that are affordable they're also affordable and they're kettle dyed so that means that they're um, basically hand dyed in, in batches I suppose and I like that they are um, they're very unique yarns they're very unique yarns Ooh, beautiful colors and I always buy mine on Eat Sleep Knit not sponsored eatsleepknit.com <clears throat> and there are hundreds of colors of the Malabrigo yarns they come in all different sizes and they range from fifteen to twenty dollars a hank and if you only need one hank you might be able to get it for fifteen dollars or I don't know how their shipping is right now I haven't ordered anything for a while I'm trying to use up my stash and I've also uh, got a subscription to knit crate that comes in every month this Malabrigo crate comes in every three months so it's exciting to get I I rarely ever know that it's coming it just shows up <laughs> so it's kind of fun so that's another whip that I have going so I have two whips three whips actually my soft linen tea my second go round of the sea and sky and my second go round of the winterscape wrap so those are my whips in progress now we don't have a giveaway today I'm not doing giveaways on Thursday but at the end of this video I will put a link to a video that I did Monday be sure to sign up for that because that winner will receive a crochet surprise box or a crochet magazine I'm giving away two things on Monday and we're going to actually unbox that crochet surprise and take a look at it so be sure to click on and put a comment in the in the comment section with the keyword so I'll leave a link for that at the end of this video so let's now take a look at the diamond painting I, I want to show you the progress I'm making on the two projects that I'm working on for Summer with the Masters which is a project by Tiny Worlds of Wonder and Diamonds in Washi those are two diamond painting YouTubers who are promoting a project where you select a diamond painting from a an artist who last published in 1926 or before the two artists that I am using are Claude Monet for Garden at Argentui and also uh, Johan Vermeer which is the girl with the girl with a pearl earring so let's take a look at those I'll take you to my work table and we'll take a look I hope my sound will be okay on this I've laid this diamond painting on the floor because it is so huge and I wanted to show it to you far away so you can see it if you'll notice see those two people right there I'm going to put a picture of the fi finished painting and on the side here and I'm going to um, let you look at it and compare it to what I've done here so I'm through with the very first column going up the right side all the way to the sky I'm so excited when I finish that part so now I'm going to peel this paper back when I continue and I will unroll it a little bit over here so that I have a, a pool noodle in there with some with some brackets or I guess clips binder clips and I have the pool noodle wrapped around the other end of my painting so when I get um, ready to start it again I will probably peel these back or I'll probably cut them off actually I'll probably cut these off and then I'll peel back another section and work on that and work on the next column so right now this is where I am I'm just gonna let you see what this looks like this has a ton of confetti in it confetti is sections of your painting that have lots and lots of colors this has a ton of colors in it but it's beautiful when you get finished so you just work and work and work until you finish um, a section of it and, and you know it, it gives you a, fe a feeling of accomplishment I like that about diamond painting I do like that and you can you can work on a diamond painting for hours and hours and hours and the time just goes by so quickly so now I'm going to pan up and show you my work tables um, it's in here in front of my bookcases 
got a mess going on here. There's my yarn stash. Y'all don't even know what that looks like. Oh, look at that. Oh, I need to straighten that up a little bit. I've got all kinds of yarn and may need to give some of that away. So y'all stay tuned. All right, over here is my work table. And this is where I'm working on Girl with a Pearl Earring right now. And as you can see, I have almost finished to the about the middle of the painting. I am almost there. And look how beautiful this is. This has not got a cover over it right now. This is, you can run your hand across it. And most of the background is in a very dark blue. And it looks black, but it's a very, very dark blue. And then that is such a contrast in the yellow top that she's wearing. Now what I did here, and let me turn the light on here so you can see it. Oh yeah, you can see that better. This is all done pretty much in AB drills. That means Aurora Borealis, and they are special drills that are very, very shiny. You can see them in there, and there's some down here. And then I did her white collar with AB drills right here. I wish I could show that a little bit better. Let me get down even closer. Okay, do you see the covers that are on these little drills? They have little sparkly tops on them. And when the light hits those, they just look so gorgeous. So I'm hoping that that will help her be a little more sparkly. I'm going to use them there. And I'm also going to use them on her scarf that hangs down. And there are a few I've already put in right there just to see how they look. So I've still left her scarf undone. I'll be working on this probably uh, this week. And maybe this weekend I'll be working on the scarf so I can bring that up to the level that I have her finished so far. I've started working on her face, so I'm um, hopefully we'll get her up here to her lips. And uh, I'll put a picture on Instagram to show y'all what she looks like. But again, here she is. Let me step back just a little bit. And she's so beautiful. She's really, really beautiful. Now, I did want to show you this one other thing. I bought this easel, and some of you I probably maybe tried diamond painting, and it's very, very hard on your back and neck if you're painting on a flat surface. So I bought this easel. Let me get around here. This easel has a um, several, I think there's six adjustments you can make in this easel. So you can make it uh, stand up straighter or you can lay it down a little bit and this seems to be a really good uh, angle for me it's on the third um, from the end third from the end notch right there and that keeps the easel at a really good angle and see when I sit in my chair then I'm really just putting my hands just straight out instead of down onto a table and then I don't have to bend over and look at what I'm doing. It's very wonderful. And you know what? I would suggest anybody who wants to diamond paint to invest in a, a, an easel. Now, this is a nice wood easel. I don't remember how much it was, but maybe $50 or something. But you can get them much less expensive. Some of them are metal. And they're like made out of a grill, you know. And But they do have adjustments on them as well. So... She's got a real glare on her face. Let me turn this off. You can see it a little bit better. There she is. So that's the progress I've made on my diamond paintings this week. I hope you have a wonderful weekend and you get to spend time with family and friends. Have something good to eat and something fun and enjoy your time with your family. And I will see you again on Monday. And join me then to find out what's on the hook.